Recently, I did a live stream event to celebrate the International Day of Mathematics on March the 14th. There was a little bit of Q&A at the end of that session, but I did not have nearly enough time to get through all of the questions. So I'm going to try and do a quick fire lightning round to have a look at these questions that came through that I didn't have time to address. Thank you for doing this session. We are wondering what your favorite optical illusion artwork based on mathematics is. This question comes from the fact that the theme for the International Day of Mathematics this year was mathematics, art, and creativity, which are not three things that are normally said in a sentence together, which I think is actually a mistake and a reason why the committee who chose the theme decided to kind of balance out and help people remember that actually mathematics is intensely artistic and creative, and art and creativity are intensely mathematical. In terms of my favorite optical illusion artwork based on mathematics, I feel as though that does provide a very specific category of artworks, and I just cannot go past the work of MC Escher. Probably his most famous uh, optical illusion that fits into this category because of its striking geometry and how it just turns your brain around uh, is called Relativity. So it, it portrays this uh, very, surreal kind of reality where all of the different directions kind of clash with each other and it is both uh, amazingly beautiful but also quite perplexing when your brain looks at it and you can't look at it too long because you start to get dizzy at least that's what I'm like. Uh, there's also a sentimental reason why I particularly love this artwork. At a school that I used to work at toward the end of the year as things were starting to calm down and relax and some of our students had finished their final examinations and people could kind of uh, have a little bit of time to themselves to, to enjoy and celebrate what they'd done across the year. Every year we would buy a 1,000 piece jigsaw puzzle and one of the ones that we solved was Relativity by MC Escher. It was extremely difficult because not only is it all black and white, so there aren't color cues to help you solve which pieces belong where, but because of the aforementioned optical illusion nature of it, you couldn't even look at a piece and say, oh, I know which way this faces. Uh, it might be a human being going up a set of stairs, except they're upside down, so they're actually going downstairs. It was super confusing, but a lot of fun to solve. Hello from Portland Central School. We want to know how you balance your teaching with your videos and everything else you do. How does it feel to have helped so many kids? Well, there's no other word to describe the feeling of helping people than gratitude. I feel immensely thankful that I have the opportunity to do something that I love, teaching and learning, and to know that that is something which helps support other people and helps them achieve something that's important for them too. That's the answer to that question. In terms of the question of balance, the short answer to that is that I am enormously grateful and privileged to work with a whole variety of different teams. So I don't do anything by myself really. All the things that I get to present, the lessons that I teach, uh, the team of people who I lead across New South Wales here in Australia, who are doing work out in a variety of different schools and communities, all of its partnership and I'm just very thankful that I get to um, join hands and connect with people who have the same mission and priorities and uh, the same kind of values that I have and are interested in helping people learn mathematics in a really engaging and interesting way. So I guess coming back to the original question, it's because I'm not alone, I'm together and I get to collaborate with lots of fantastic human beings. There's a set of questions here now that all kind of hang together. So I'm gonna ask them all at once and then I'll try and go one at a time. There's three questions. Was math your favorite subject at school? How long have you been fascinated by maths? And a student from Marrickville High School asked, why do you like maths? Okay, these all fit together. So, was mathematics my favorite subject at school? And the answer is no, it wasn't. I'm quite a late bloomer when it comes to mathematics, actually. I didn't mind mathematics when I was at school, but I definitely struggled a lot with it. And I think a lot of people um, can resonate with the fact that a subject which you're finding really difficult, it's not necessarily impossible, but it's really hard to say like that's your favorite subject. The subject which I felt naturally resonated with me were all the humanities type subjects. So if you're not familiar with that word, they're subjects like English, history, drama, the, the places where there are, there's stories and characters and plot and narrative, these are the places where I really felt at home and I understood how to analyze a text and be able to write a good essay about it. So math, was not my favorite subject when I was at school, which gets to the next part. How long have I been 
fascinated by mathematics. I think there was a small seed of interest and curiosity when I was younger because I, despite not being naturally talented at mathematics myself, I know a lot of people who are, I'm related to some of them in my family. And so I knew there was something there in the work that they did that was kind of, huh, what's that all about? I wish I understood it, but maybe that's something for later. But the time when I was absolutely, oh, now I get it. Now I see why this is so amazing. The how long question really goes back to when I started teaching. So that's around 20 years for me at the moment, at this particular point in time, if you go back to when I got on the journey of becoming a teacher in high schools. And so the reason why that is kind of the defining uh, point is that I've been fascinated by mathematics because I see that it has this unique power to help people see and comprehend and appreciate the world around them. There's something enormously precious when you are trying to solve a mathematical problem and it's hard and your brain hurts and then suddenly it all clicks and it makes sense and you, you see it differently and something goes on in your brain that is immensely satisfying when you have that experience and is deeply gratifying when you can help someone else have that experience. So it was being able to help others with mathematics that made me fascinated by the subject itself. And that is kind of the answer to the last question there, at least it's part of an answer. Why do I like mathematics? It's because it is both powerful to enable people to solve problems that matter to them, and also it's beautiful. You know, you, you can listen to a song or look at an artwork and appreciate and enjoy it, even if it has no practical use to you. And mathematics is all about patterns and the human brain loves and feels delight when it experiences a pattern. So these are some of the things that I like about the subject. What is the most complicated thing in mathematics? Thanks. Well, <laughs> I don't have a good answer to this question. I have an answer, but I wouldn't call it a good answer. The main answer I have is, I have no idea. Mathematics is such a broad and deep field. I haven't even scratched the surface of all the mathematics that's out there, even though you know, I did okay at school and I went and did a mathematics degree when I was at university. One of the things about many fields of knowledge, and I think mathematics is just a very, very good example of it, is that as you, as you learn more and as you grow and as you struggle, it's a little bit like climbing a mountain. As you get higher and higher and higher, you look back on all the things that you've learned and you think, wow, what an amazing landscape before you. But at certain points, you might reach the, the summit of a mountain. You get to the peak and you think, yes, I've achieved. I've finished the high school certificate or I got my bachelor of science majoring in mathematics. You, you've reached this incredible achievement. But the thing is, from that peak, from that summit, I want you to imagine climbing an actual mountain. And from the tip of that mountain, only now that you're that high, you can suddenly see off into the distance and realize there are further mountain ranges that were invisible to you when you just started climbing. When you're at the foot of that mountain you've currently reached the top of, you didn't even know that there were other mountains there. And so the higher you go, the more vistas that you see. So I don't know what the most complicated thing in mathematics is. I imagine as well, one of the things about mathematics is that going back to the note, the theme of creativity, people are imagining and creating and devising new mathematics all the time. Even though a lot of the mathematics that we learn in school has been known and established for centuries, uh, actually millennia in some cases, it's not as though this is this, it is this static, uh, unmoving, immutable body of knowledge. We're still developing new understanding and growing and going further. So it's a little bit like asking, you know, what's the most complicated thing in the universe? Well, there's new galaxies that we haven't seen and there are realities even literally underneath our feet that we don't understand. So not sure what the answer to that is, but hopefully my response makes sense. Why do you like fractals so much from All Saints Grammar? <laughs> okay, I'll give you a couple of different reasons for this one. Number one, I think they just look cool. And I don't think you need to have another reason than that, apart from the fact that you know, you can enjoy the beauty of something in and of itself. There doesn't need to be a reason after that. However, for me, at least with fractals, there is a reason after that. And that's that even though we spend a lot of time in school studying shapes like squares and triangles and circles, these kinds of objects, which belong to a field called Euclidean geometry, named after a guy named Euclid from ancient Greece, 
We study these shapes because they are, in a way, found all around us in reality. However, these sort of perfect, idealized shapes, they don't really truly exist, exist except in our imagination. Say, for example, if you think about the Earth, right? The Earth roughly looks spherical, but it's not really spherical, it's bumpy. There are mountains and valleys. And so if you ever actually have a look at the gritty um, roughness of reality, uh, the, the circles and squares and triangles that we study are just kind of a representation of that, but not the real thing. Fractals, by contrast, they exist everywhere. Um, you know, my body is, is full of, and your body for that matter, it's full of veins and arteries and teeny tiny capillaries that feed blood and oxygen and nutrients to every cell in your body. And the way that they do that, starting from the biggest veins and arteries right near your heart, down to perhaps you might even be able to see the, the veins on my, my hand and my arm, all the way down to these teeny tiny blood vessels that are so small you can barely see them with the human eye, that idea of cell similarity and shrinking down, that's a fractal. And as you see out in nature, if you look at the, the branches of a tree or a river delta as it spreads out across a landscape, all these shapes are fractals and they can be mathematically understood and appreciated. So I guess those are a couple of reasons why I love fractals so much.